Hi guys, I'm uh, Jamie Noble. I'm the Noble Artist uh, online. Um, I create artwork for board games and books. Um, I'm currently working for a board game company right now uh, called Table Tyrant Games in Australia. Uh, really cool guys. Uh, I urge you to check them out. Um, but I've been asked by some of the people who follow me uh, to show you my process on how I create artwork. So that's what I'm going to do today. Um, one of the characters that I'll be working on today is for Table Tyrant Games. Uh, and here he is. This is the diplomat uh, character who is kind of snooty and posh. Um, and uh, I'm just going to show you my process now. So I usually start off with a sketch. Uh, I did this from a photo of me. Um, and I'm just colouring in to kind of form a silhouette with a block colour behind it. Um, I can press those down into one layer and then I can use a marquee around it, um, which I'll show you in later videos how to do. Uh, once you've got the silhouette, it makes it really easy just to kind of work on, throw colours down on. Um, and uh, it makes life a lot more fun. Um, so that's what I'm doing right now. The background I've just nicked from another um, another image that I did for the same project, uh, just to kind of give me the kind of tones and stuff that I need. I will obviously finish the background off later on. But right now I'm just going to throw some colours down, uh, get some uh, jewellery down. Obviously, as I say, he's uh, a um, affluent guy, so uh, he's got some. I want to kind of show that in his, in the colours of his of his clothes and stuff. A bit lurid at the moment, but obviously as uh, I add different layers, um, it will kind of start to tone down a little bit, and it'll be uh, a lot nicer to look at. Uh, so I've also added in his hair, his eyebrows. Um, there's the uh, marquee I was telling you about. Uh, I've just chucked a multiplier layer down on top of it, um, which makes whatever is underneath it darker. So I'm adding in some shadows using that layer now which uh, maintains my uh, drawing layer underneath so I can see what I'm doing um, and uh, actually also the initial colour layer was done on a, an overlay layer uh, which means I can still see underneath it too um, as I say it's just to sort of throw some basic colours down and work out what I'm doing um, I've just uh, duplicated the, the group just there uh, which means that I can flatten uh, all the layers together which makes it a bit easier again with the silhouette just to kind of use and uh, it just gives me a safety backup of the original layers that I was using uh, before I flattened it all. So I'm just going to add some more details in now with a multiplier layer, kind of adding shadows and stuff, uh, using a eyedropper tool to pinch colours off the ca canvas which is quite handy. Uh, it's worth noting not to do that too much because you can get really muddy colours after a while if you're not too careful. Um, so you have to go, and go back like I just did there and, and sort of find the colours you're after. Uh, so here is a little bit more kind of shadow on top. Um, it will get even more shadowy as time goes on. For some reason I don't go straight into it, I always kind of blend down really slowly. Uh, but I'm now adding some um, some highlight layers. These are on, on, on normal layers now, uh, rather than on a kind of particular um, overlay or anything at all. Uh, and they do look kind of pretty uh, out there at the moment, kind of the, the, but I like to get the kind of highlights right down and I, I like to blend afterwards. Uh, and just build on the image as, as time goes, but you'll see fairly soon I start to look a little bit like a uh, vampire from Buffy the Vampire Slayer, or a bit like Worf from Star Trek. So here I'm just adding some hair in, so I'm just removing the uh, marquee that I had around it so I can get, a, get the hair free flowing out of the silhouette uh, to make things look a little bit more organic and natural. Uh, just throwing them down using a what I call a long hairbrush. Uh, it's kind of lots of dots and when you drag them along the canvas it kind of makes strands of hair save you doing every single strand uh, separately but obviously because you use that brush over and over again it kind of starts to look a little bit uniform so you still have to like I have done here change to a, a single strand brush just a plain brush uh, and start to throw in kind of single lines as well uh, obviously kind of start off with it a little bit chunky but as you add more um, it starts to kind of break it up and, uh, and look a bit more natural so just going through the beard at the moment and making it, I wanted to kind of give him a straight beard because a lot of the scraggly beard uh, dwarves I've done so far um, look like they've been kind of like mining, doing kind of graft work, whereas this guy is uh, a little bit kind of sitting there doing the books and uh, and, and organising deals with people and, and kind of more of a legal type guy, so I wanted him to look fairly well groomed. Um, this guy uh, is just an example of where I wanted to go um, and kind of, I like to refer back to sort of kind of stuff if I've got it um, uh, at the same time. Uh, if you look He's got these uh, moustache kind of like hacked off bits because he uh, worked for a guild uh, called the Red Cloaks and they sew their uh, moustaches into their cloaks. 
uh, I wanted to kind of depict that he uh, has kind of had his sort of hacked off as he's been thrown out of the uh, out of the guild. Uh, so back to the diplomat uh, that we were working on. Uh, I've chucked some more kind of hair down on his face and kind of we skipped ahead a little bit here, but I'm just trying to cover up uh, some of the line work and stuff because I like to keep it in there to kind of give me a guide and stuff. And sometimes some of it like kind of popping through is quite nice. It kind of uh, looks kind of natural and stuff, but uh, you do kind of want to get rid of it as much as you can um, sort of by the end of the uh, process because it, yeah, it, it sort of kind of adds a bit more of a cartoony effect if you're not careful. So I'm just starting to blend some of those colors together that I sort of said about earlier. Uh, and I'm just going to add in uh, some uh, it's a pause brush, but I'm going to use it for stubble uh, to make it look like he's shaved kind of the bottom of his beard, um, run his cheeks kind of uh, in to make it look like he's got a bit more of uh, a stylistic beard. Um, also going to tidy up his nostrils a little bit, uh, add some more detail to his eyes with a multiply layer, um, darken those down a bit because they're quite thick, but sort of dark, deep set. Um, add some little details with a red kind of colour to his lip. Um, just push those eye sockets back a little bit. And just tidy up around where I've kind of left it a bit rough around the edges. Just got a case of just blending through all the colours now. Okay, so I've just uh, duplicated that layer again, uh, and we skip forward a little bit. I've given it a few moles and a few uh, kind of little freckles there. I've also kind of added a little bit of bluey grey uh, to inside his eye sockets, um, just because otherwise you get to this point where everything's a bit too pink. And there's, if you look at a face, there really are quite a few colours in there. Um, so yeah, I've started to blend those a little bit more, um, just adding some more kind of blending colours in now. A little bit more red around his face, as I say. Sort of, uh, it's not all red, but uh, the Sort of nature of this picture is because of the lighting. Uh, it's orangey, sort of kind of red colour. And I'm just going to go through and uh, make sure the clothes are starting to kind of look a little bit more um, 3D, I guess. Um, I do like to uh, kind of flip between the face and the clothes. I kind of tend to come back to the face again towards the end once everything's kind of uh, in order. Um, with clothing, obviously, you want to make sure that kind of things flow uh, kind of nicely. Um, here, I have uh, he's got a hat which has got a ginormous uh, feather on it, uh, and I'm again using the long hair brush that I used on his hair before to kind of make that uh, look kind of organic. Um, that's sort of a different layer. That's one thing that I kept on this uh, image uh, separate on one layer. Um, just to make sure that as I was kind of filling in detail on his body behind it, that it wasn't going to cause any problems. Now I'm adding detail. Um, to his uh, wrist because I think that although the face as I mentioned before it really is the sort of kind of set piece of the whole thing the anchor um, you want little bits to sort of a detail to bounce off of around the image uh, as well um, you know rather than just a sort of kind of a blank canvas and then just a complete sort of set on his face uh, so I'm kind of giving a bit of a lacy uh, kind of sleeve here I wasn't really sure what to do with it when I sketched it I kind of wanted something a bit fancy so with this bit here I'm just going over the uh, hand and I'm realizing quite quickly that uh, it doesn't look quite right. I kind of wanted to kind of have a bit of a different pose for his hand, something elegant and a little bit posh and what have you and stuff. So I spent a bit of time now just working that out. It should have been kind of worked out in the sketch and that is uh, kind of unfortunately the nature of the beast. Sometimes you decide that things aren't working properly and you have to change them. Um, but that's cool, it's kind of part of rolling with uh, what you're doing. Um, so I have kind of put his fingers as more of a kind of a, a light kind of like um, pose, uh, and I'm adding a thumb around the outside. Um, so he's uh, holding his drink quite elegantly. Uh, so I'm just filling all of that in now. And the stem of the, uh, of the goblet. Uh, and just trying to tidy these things up a little bit. He looks a little bit sort of like mashed up at the moment, so <laughs> it's just kind of a case of. Uh, blending those properly and uh, and sort of making sure the highlights look right on them. Adding some shadow to the uh, to the goblet as well because it's sort of um, a real high contrast with uh, with metals. You need to kind of sort of make sure that you've got some kind of like very light lights and some very dark darks in there as well to kind of uh, show the uh, the kind of nature of the um, shiny surface. 
So I am just uh, adding some detail to his necklace. Um, he is a diplomat, as I mentioned before, um, but I'm assuming he's a diplomat for the city, so he would probably have uh, something which resembles something similar to the um, icons uh, used within the game, which are anvils uh, and hammers and what have you. So uh, that's why he's got a hammer necklace. Uh, and the fact that he's kind of fairly wealthy as well, he's going to have some gold knocking around on him. Uh, in comparison to the other guys, just adding some more details to that now, just doesn't look so plain. Um, it's kind of fairly eye catching because it's bang central. Uh, as you can see, I've added some more shadows to his face and what have you, um, and uh, just sort of darkened and lightened bits to kind of pull his face uh, out properly. Um, now, just changing the eyes because they were just kind of placeholders for the time being. Um, I was playing with some different kind of uh, moods that he might be in. I mean, I wanted him to look kind of like kind of <laughs> sick of the conversation, uh, but it wasn't really working too well, so just changed those. Added some uh, some blue eye colour. It's actually more of a grey, which you'd be surprised when you put blue against uh, um, uh, reds and, and what have you and stuff, how ridiculously blue it looks. So kind of using a, like a very, very grey blue, uh, so the, um, the sort of saturation level is, is very low, uh, actually makes it kind of look much more natural. Uh, so just adding some final details now. Uh, we're pretty much coming to the end of it, um, just pulling his eyebrows out a little bit, make them look a bit more natural. But uh, I think it's turned out pretty well. It's a piece of card art, so uh, it kind of will um, not need the crazy amount of detail that you might put into uh, something um, that was may maybe going to be on the uh, on the box front. Um, but that's uh, that's the final final picture. I hope you've uh, enjoyed the uh, the video. I've certainly enjoyed doing it and uh, and showing my process. It's probably helped me learn a few things as well, which I uh, kind of hadn't thought of before. Um, if you enjoy watching this, I'd love you to follow me on YouTube, uh, and I would also love you to come and visit me on Facebook. Uh, you can search for the Noble Artist, but I'm it's uh, Facebook.com/slash Jamie Noble Artist. Uh, come and give me a like. Uh, if you want to come and check out my website as well, I've got loads more of my work there. I'll obviously be putting videos up uh, here, there, and everywhere too. Uh, but you can find me at thenobleartist.com. Thank you very much. It's been my pleasure and I hope to see you all again very soon. Bye.